Are we alone in the universe? Or, nah, is there someone else out there? That's of course one of the main questions SETI is trying to answer. And not just the SETI Institute, but the entire community responsible for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence using various very powerful radio telescopes. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some recent discoveries and some recent announcements coming from a really intriguing investigation of approximately 820 different stars. Investigations involving artificial intelligence that might have discovered 8 potential really intriguing signals that don't actually mean that we found aliens, but instead provide evidence for new techniques and new explorations for how we could potentially find extraterrestrial signals if they do exist. And so in this video, let's talk a little bit more about what was achieved, what exactly these 8 signals represent, and what it means for the future of SETI in general. But let's actually start with a similar discovery that we've discussed in one of the previous videos. A discovery by a project known as Breakthrough Listen. This actually happened just a couple of years ago and was an unusual signal known as BLC1. Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, the first potential candidate discovered by the program. And this was a really intriguing signal for one really important reason. It seemed to have appeared when the scientists were observing Proxima Centauri the nearest star to us, the star that we know has at least one planet in the habitable zone. And so even though initially there was a lot of excitement and a lot of talk about this particular signal, within just a few months, the scientists almost definitively determined that this was very likely not aliens or extraterrestrial intelligence talking to us, but was instead some kind of a local interference very likely coming from planet Earth that they were able to confirm by discovering a lot of similar signals in previous data. And although it's not entirely clear what caused this particular signal even today, by discovering a lot of similar signals in similar data, they were able to confirm that here this was just a false positive. Something has become a really big problem for a lot of radio astronomy as of 2023. There is even more radio interference coming from a lot of different sources, and in many cases it's becoming even more difficult to tell everything apart. But nevertheless, BLC1 had a lot of intriguing properties that we generally are looking for when looking for potential signals from an extraterrestrial intelligence. For example, this signal only occupied an extremely narrow band of frequencies, something we expect from an artificial signal, but not something we expect from a natural source. As a matter of fact, only certain radio signals coming from natural sources, such as FRBs, have similar patterns. The majority of radio signals coming from natural sources will always have a much wider pattern. Another property that's very important is what's known as frequency drift. This is essentially a Doppler effect from an object moving in relation to planet Earth. And in this case it also contained it, but it could also have been caused by a passing satellite or by something in outer space in the solar system reflecting radio waves. Nevertheless, Doppler effect is usually really important for potential discoveries. It basically means that the object is definitely moving really fast across the galaxy itself. It also persisted for several hours, which even today is somewhat difficult to explain. But because its frequency is extremely close to frequencies used by various aircraft, it's actually quite possible that this was indeed coming from a nearby aircraft. It's just not entirely clear what it was. Nevertheless, all of these properties together, along with the fact that we can actually maybe see this signal more than once, is usually what the scientists are trying to find when looking for potential signals for maybe an extraterrestrial intelligence. But today radio astronomy reached the point where there is just way way too much data. So many different signals, including FRBs, so many potential interferences, and no way to easily tell everything apart. And so trying to analyze all of these radio signals and figuring out where everything is coming from is definitely a challenge. But because all of this is based on very specific type of data analysis and specifically looking for very specific patterns, we do have a pretty good solution to all of this. AI or technically machine learning. Something that was in the news quite a lot in the last few years, especially a lot of image projects like Midjourney that obviously almost everyone by now has used already, or ChatGPT that allows us to create very realistic text that we actually are going to be discussing in a separate video as well. But today AI is also very widely used in science, specifically in data analysis. And that's because by design AI is just an extremely good classifier. It's able to quickly go through data and put it into different chunks and then also make various predictions. And that's essentially the principle behind most of the modern AI. I'm sort of oversimplifying this, but that's basically the principle behind modern AI. It's just an extremely good classifier. 
Despite various claims, the algorithm here does not understand, does not actually interact or think, it only really detects patterns, and will usually be really really good at just one task. And in this case, it's a perfect task for it, detecting specific patterns in radio signals. And so that's essentially what the scientists from University of Toronto decided to do, develop an extremely specifically trained AI to go through a lot of radio sources from 820 different stars collected by the Green Bank Telescope in order to then see if anything stands out. And well, as the article right here states, it definitely has. Eight potential new signals, to some extent somewhat similar to BLC1, with very intriguing properties that currently cannot be explained. And the signals that previously have actually been missed by a lot of other algorithms, including classical algorithms, that used older data analysis techniques. Although even in this case, the authors pretty much clearly state that it's quite certain that none of this is from extraterrestrial intelligence. And just like with BLC1, is most likely some kind of an interference from one of the local sources. Nevertheless, artificial intelligence trying to detect extraterrestrial intelligence definitely is a pretty cool concept and is a pretty clickbaity title. And so the major achievement here was being able to go through approximately 150 terabytes of data collected over a period of several months using this very specifically designed AI algorithm, and it was then able to identify approximately 20,000 various potential signals. And then, through more thorough analysis of each of these 20,000 signals, eight of them kind of stood out. Once again, similar patterns. Very narrow frequency, appearing over a period of several hours, some changing in frequency over time, showing Doppler effects, and some being relatively long, implying that the algorithm was performing extremely well. And so even though in this case it might still be false positives, it's really the fact that this seems to be working and working really really fast and can then be actually used with radio telescopes directly in order to discover even more signals that makes this particular research so exciting and so interesting. And so basically it's the creation of the AI algorithm with an extremely specific ability to search for extraterrestrial intelligence. But when it comes to these eight signals, further investigation or attempt to rediscover them so far has proven to be negative. So don't expect alien spaceships or anyone trying to call planet Earth anytime soon. Once again, it's very likely some sort of a local signal interference that we still do not understand very well. But because this technique is now going to be used on the South Africa's Meerkat telescope that contains 64 dishes acting as a single telescope, it's actually quite likely that we're going to be detecting more of these signals in the years to come, possibly even this year in 2023. And so in the next few years, we might either actually hear someone talking to us or more likely pinpoint the exact sources of this particular interference that's been kind of confusing the SETI scientists. And so at least for now, we're going to assume that it's most likely not aliens. But if you'd like to learn why it's not aliens, check out one of the previous videos in the ongoing series that I'm creating right now on the Fermi Paradox. Some of the videos are in the description. Anyway, once we learn something else or once the scientists discover what's actually causing this, I'll make sure to follow this up with the next video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.